I was fortunate to have some very strong mentors who took me under their wing and um, not only challenged me, but they, but they also didn't um, uh, baby me. They showed me how to go about it. And that was really important. That to me was the key, is finding those university professors who care enough of their, for their students. And not at all professors are like that. How do you find them? How do you find them? Um, I think you find each other. I think, I, I think um, uh, when, when uh, a professor is astute enough to see that there's some low self-esteem going on, but there's a sense of curiosity, that they nurture that sense of curiosity. And the student has to take ownership or self-government, if you want, if, uh, um, and to uh, go along on that journey. It's like a child taking baby steps. When I was in residential school, that was a different picture. We were put in a place of high, uh, the, the supervisors and the teachers were in a place of hierarchy and um, uh, authority. And for, for those of us who have s s low self-esteem, it was very, very difficult to not perceive them as gods, right? So going into the university setting, these are gods. And um, so, I, I think it's really important to, to go back to home base and recognize your own value systems and recognize people are just people. And um, do your selection mm -hmm. of, of, of people by research. I, I remember um, when my daughter went to university, my son, they were more into research than I was. They would ask fellow students, what is this professor like? And what is, you know, how do they teach? And um, what should I be careful of? I mean, they're, they're, that's a, being astute and recognizing that you have some ownership on who your professor is going to be. How are they going to fit into uh, the courses that you pick for your lifelong dream? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes people, of course, go through counseling. Counselors, I didn't have a good counselor. I ended up taking classes that I actually hated and didn't particularly like the instructors. Uh, eventually finding my way and weaving my way to, um, from a social work degree, drifting into literature because my professor in literature captured my attention and a professor in history captured my attention. And so, Though I may not have done great in terms of high marks, I persevered. I persevered because of my love for those um, histories and the English stories. So if you get into a course that just doesn't seem to click, we could draw. you stick it out or get out? I tended to stick it out um, because I didn't know any better. But I think now people are getting much more astute in terms of if I hate it, it's not speaking to my heart, lets me get out of here. And I would work at, you know, withdrawing and figuring out what, what's the best way to do, to do that. And how can you just choose a path, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I always reflect back to my language going, uh, which means we walk a crooked way in a crooked manner with all of our crooked relatives in a bent over way. And there's a lot of paths to choose from. And it's not to say we're crooked people as in, as in we're thieves or criminals or anything like that. We're just uh, crippled human beings learning a path. And it takes us many, many different directions. Um, perseverance, to dream. We must dream. Um, long before I became a writer, I dreamt it, and it took me 20 years to recognize that dream, OK? And I didn't realize I was to be a writer, because my, my, one of my first loves in my, in when I was growing up was social work. I thought I could fix people if I didn't, uh, because I understood where they come from. Little did I know, I didn't know where I came from, right? But I finished my social work degree, and I drifted into writing uh, accidentally, just keeping a journal in, because I had a great and profound uh, English professor. And uh, my love of books came through Peter Zosky as well on CBC, if you recall, Peter Zosky. I'd listened to the books he had read, to the people that he had interviewed, and then I would talk to my university professor and we'd get into these discussions. So perseverance, that natural curiosity, to pursue that curiosity is so important, and to know what you love. 
the last thing I wanted to do was write, for example, because English doesn't come easily to me, um, and it's, it still doesn't. I mean, I, I persevere at it, though. I pick it up through osmosis, and I pick it up through asking, like, what does that mean? How do you say that word? Um, and people think I'm articulate, and perhaps that I am, but there's still words I do not get, and I don't make an apology for that because it's, English is not my first language. And if they can't speak my language, they have no business laughing at me. Okay, so I use that with people, like, be really proud of your dialect, your, your vernacular th talking. It's beautiful. Like, we're, we're so much more full of character than the average person, right? Did I tell you that, for example, right? Uh, to me, that's lovely. I love it. My message is uh, believe in yourself, pay attention to your dreams, and forge ahead. And be curious.